Hello everyone, today we're talking about more of the trig graphs, specifically secant, cosecant, tangent, and cotangent graphs, section 5.4, the last section in chapter 5. So tangent and cotangent curves, um, the A is still going to represent the amplitude, um, and I'll show you what that means in the context of a tangent and cotangent graph. The K will still affect our period in the same way, except for the fact that our period of a tangent and cotangent is only pi. So uh, the base tangent and cotangent periods is just pi units rather than 2 pi that the other four functions um, use. So here is a typical cosecant graph. So remember that cosecant is equal to 1 over sine. So really, all these cosecant graphs are doing, right? Remember, typically a sine graph starts here, maximum there, back at 0, minimum there, back at 0. So in blue is a typical sine graph. So all the cosecant graph is, is it's just the opposite in each um, particular interval. Um, and you'll see um, here at whenever the sine equals zero, these are vertical asymptotes for our cosecant. And when I go ahead and get into the problem, I think it'll make a little more sense. So again, secant, secant is just equal to one over cosine. And remember, our cosine starts at the positive one and then goes through x-axis at the first interval, negative x-axis again, back up to my positive amplitude. And again, you can see that we have vertical asymptotes when cosine, when, uh, cosine equals zero. And typically, our windows are going to look like this. So we're going to have part of a secant graph, we're going to have a complete secant graph, and then again, the left-hand side of the secant graph when we do the cosine, right? Because we're just worried about the opposite, the inverse of our cosine. And you'll see when we get to the secant graph. All right, so here's where it gets a little bit different. Tangent, remember, tangent only has a period of pi. So it goes from negative, two, uh, from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, so that's if um, we have our base tangent, it's just that period there from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. At the first interval, they don't show the first interval, but obviously our intervals here would be pi over 4. At our first interval on the right-hand side, it equals our positive amplitude. At the first interval on the left-hand side, it equals our negative amplitude, and then our graph just approaches these vertical asymptotes. Okay, and we can see that it is like a typical cube graph. And it, and it is important to note that tangent goes through the origin, right? So whenever we transform the origin, whether we go up, over, down, over, the tangent's going to start at the origin. The cotangent starts at negative pi over 2, negative pi over 2 being where the tangent has an asymptote. So wherever the tangent has an asymptote, right? Tangent was asymptote at negative pi over two, cotangent equals zero, and vice versa. So wherever uh, cotangent has a vertical asymptote, tangent equals zero. So our typical cotangent graph is gonna look like this, right? Because we, we know we deal with the positive values of our radian measure, our angles. And just like the tangent, Okay, the first interval is going to be our, our positive amplitude, third interval, negative amplitude, right? And this looks like still an x cubed graph, but we're, going, we're starting high, ending low, instead of starting low, ending high. And you'll see more examples of these as I go through the example problems, but I wanted to make sure I gave you the base graphs that we should definitely have down, just like uh, in class we went over the cosine and sine base graphs. So the first one I want to do is cosecant of one half. So what we're going to do, we're going to treat this as, and remember cosecant corresponds to sine, right? The C goes with the S, 
and then the S goes with the C, okay? So cosecant is 1 over sine, so we're going to treat it like a sine graph, and then we're just going to draw the inverse of it. So my amplitude is 2, my period is 2 pi, because it's still 2 pi, divided by 1 half, so when you flip and multiply, we get 4 pi. My horizontal shift, none. Vertical shift, none. And interval is 4 pi over 4. So my intervals are going to be pi units long. So now I go ahead and draw just my typical axes. Remember, we're always going to have four intervals. And I'm going to start off by drawing just the regular sine graph as if these were the critical numbers for our sine graph. So I'll do, um, I'll do the sine graph in orange, and then I'll show you the cosecant, the actual graph we're looking for. I'll do that in blue. So if this were, and remember the amplitude is 2 and negative 2. So if this were a regular sine graph, Right? I would start at the origin, at the first interval I'd be at the maximum, back at uh, zero, then at the minimum, back at zero. So if this were a sine graph, it would look like that. However, it is not a sine graph. It is a cosecant graph. So what that means is I have vertical asymptotes whenever the sine graph equals zero. And my graph, my actual graph that I'm looking for, the cosecant graph, is in blue. Okay, so they start at the positive and negative amplitude, and then they just approach my asymptotes. They'll never cross those pink dotted lines. So that graph represents that equation. Next, let me do the secant. And remember, secant corresponds to cosine. So I'm going to graph this just like it's a cosine graph. And then I'll draw the secant lines in. So uh, before I can go any further, we see we have a 2 in here. So I have to rewrite this with the 2 on the outside, meaning I divide my first term by 2. So I must divide my second term by 2. So my amplitude is 1. There's nothing in front of my secant, so it's just 1. My period is 2 pi over 2 because the 2 is being multiplied by our x. So my period is pi. My vertical shift is um, up 1. My horizontal shift is left pi over 2. And my interval is pi divided by 4. So remember when we do these horizontal shifts, uh, whenever we have a horizontal shift, we're going to make sure we get our horizontal and our um, intervals with a common denominator. So I'm just going to write this one as 2 pi over 4. Now we have a common denominator. It makes it real easy to go ahead and plug those in on the graph. So uh, I've shifted left and I've shifted up. So I'm going to draw, actually I'm going to draw my graph further over here. And I'm going to draw it with plenty of space on the top. Okay, uh, so my new x-axis is at y equals 1, and my new y-axis is going to be at negative 2 pi over 4 or negative pi over 2. So I know that's my new, not a very straight line, but we get the point. That's my new y-axis. So now I'm going to go ahead and put my intervals in, and then I'm going to graph a basic cosine graph, and then draw the secant graph from there. I think it makes it a whole lot easier than to try to draw the secant graph from scratch. So this was negative 2 pi over 4. So this is just negative pi over 4, negative 1 pi over 4, then 0, then pi over 4, and 2 pi over 4, or just pi over 2. And again, you can see um, that we have covered a distance of pi units, right? So our period checks. So now 
Let's go ahead and again, I'll graph the typical cosine graph, typical cosine graph in orange, um, and then I'll do the secant graph in blue. So typical cosine graph starts on the y-axis, in this case our new y-axis at the positive amplitude. At the first interval, it crosses our new x-axis. At the second interval, it is at its negative amplitude. Remember our amplitude being one. Since we were shifted up one, I'm now at um, negative two pi over four, two. I'm at negative pi over four, one. And at the negative amplitude is really zero, zero. Then I'm back at the uh, new x-axis, and then finally back at my positive amplitude. So a typical cosine graph. would look like that. However, I want the secant. So again, I'm going to have vertical asymptotes whenever the cosine graph crosses my x-axis, in this case, my new x-axis. That's what I'm worried about. And then the secant is just the inverse of that. So it's going to start here and approach my asymptote. Here, it's going to start here and approach asymptotes on both sides. And on this side, it's going to start at my uh, maximum amplitude and approach the asymptote there. So my secant graph being the blue lines here. Next, let's do a tangent graph. So I'm going to do the same thing. Amplitude, while well, there's a 2 in front. Period. Okay, tangent graph is just pi over k. In this case, my k is 2, so I get pi over 2. My vertical shift, none. I'm not adding anything. Horizontal shift, none. And my interval is pi over 2 divided by 4, which turns out to be pi over 8. So I'm counting by pi over 8. Now let's go ahead and tangent graph is a little bit different, right? Because the tangent graph takes place based around the origin. So I'm going to draw it typically how you'd see your axes drawn with your y-axis uh, right down the middle. So let's go ahead and with our tangent, we're going to draw it. We always start at the origin and we're going to draw intervals below and above. So this is the rare case where we're doing intervals to the right and to the left of our starting point. So tangent has to have a period of pi over 2, intervals of pi over 8. So this is negative pi over 8. This is negative 2 pi over 8, or negative pi over 4. This is pi over 8, and this is 2 pi over 8. So now we've got our interval, right, because our, our tangent starts at the origin, goes, um, goes from low to high. So we're going to start low, go high. And it's going to have uh, vertical asymptotes at two intervals to the left of my origin, wherever the origin may be. So if I shift my origin left to right, still two intervals to the left is an asymptote, and two intervals to the right is an asymptote. Our amplitude is two. So. To go ahead and draw our graph, we're always going to start at the origin, so that's a good place to start. Positive tangents start low and high. So interval on the first interval to the right reaches my positive amplitude. First interval to the left reaches my negative amplitude. Then the graph just goes up something like this, and just goes something like this. Okay, and both sides approaching our vertical asymptotes. So that is a basic tan with uh, just a simple change to our amplitude and period. Um, and we'll get into shifts left and right, up and down. Before we do that, let's do a cotangent graph. So if you, look, if you go back and look at the basic cotangent graph, you get an idea of what we have to graph here. But we're going to start with amplitude is 3. Period is pi. Remember, cotangent and tangent is always pi over k. So pi over pi over 4, that's the same as pi times 4 over 
pi, so my period just takes place in four radians. Uh, my vertical shift, there's none here. My horizontal shift, there's none here. And my intervals is just going to be four divided by four or one. So every one radian, uh, we have an interval. Now, cotangent is a little bit uh, different than tangent because cotangent is going to start at the origin and work its way right, just like all our other um, basic, all our other trig functions. So tangent is the only one where it has some to the left and some to the right. Reason being, cotangent has vertical asymptotes wherever the tangent is zero. So since the tangent is zero at the origin, cotangent has a vertical asymptote at zero. So now if I go ahead and draw my intervals, my intervals are going to go one, two, three, four, so nice easy radians. I'm going to have a vertical asymptote on the y-axis and at four. Okay, so the cotangent, just like the tangent, the outside intervals are vertical asymptotes. Okay, but then since the cotangent is the inverse of the tangent, instead of, instead of going from low to high, it goes from high to low. So I start at 2, right, so the second interval from um, our beginning, from the origin, and one below goes to three. Um, so yeah, so one below two. So first interval goes to the uh, positive amplitude. Third interval goes to the negative amplitude. And then just like the tangent graph, well, similar at least, except the opposite direction. And that's not the best cotangent graph, but we get the idea. Um, starting high to low. So. How we know uh, where the vertical asymptotes are. Cotangent is going to have vertical asymptotes whenever the tangent graph is equal to zero. So cotangent has a vertical asymptote at the y-axis, and then it has a vertical asymptote at the fourth interval. Because tangent at the fourth interval, you can see, will have fourth interval um, to the right of the origin, will yet again be at zero, and vice versa. The cotangent is zero at the second interval from the origin, right? It's zero here, so that's why the tangent has a vertical asymptote there. Finally, let's do one more tangent. I want to do one with a whole bunch of stuff and with a negative in it. So we can go straight to our five critical pieces of information, amplitude being two, uh, period being there's nothing being multiplied by my x, so it's just going to say pi. My uh, vertical shift, sorry, I always like to go vertical shift. Up one, horizontal shift, the left, pi over two. Um, and then intervals, pi over four. So now I'm going to go ahead. Typical tangent graph would be based right around the origin, but now I'm even going further left. So I'm going to draw my y-axis far to the right. Okay, my asymptote, or I'm sorry, my amplitudes are two. And typically, my tangent would be ba would be based right around the origin, right? But now I have moved. Well, let's let's move. Uh, Let's move my x-axis, I like to do that first. That's my vertical shift up, because I've gone up one. And I have shift my origin, I have shift my y-axis left pi over two. So again, I want my intervals to be the same, so this is really two pi over four, I've shifted it. Okay, so if I had pi over four, and then negative two pi over four, so that is my new y-axis, meaning that this point right here, and I'm going to do it in blue because that's eventually what my graph will be, that point right there is my new origin. These dotted lines do not represent asymptotes. It's very important. They represent my new x and y axes. 
So it may help to have um, pens of different color or colored pencils to tell the difference between your asymptotes and your axes. So tangent always starts right in the middle at the origin and then has two intervals to the right and two intervals to the left, so negative three pi over four, negative four pi over four. And at two intervals to the right and two intervals to the left, we have our vertical asymptotes. So those are actually our asymptotes that you wanna make sure you include in your graph. And now, since it's negative, Instead of the first interval to the right being the amplitude, and I want to make sure here I have 3, 0, negative 2, and let's see, negative 1. So instead of the tangent graph going from low to high, now it's going to go from high to low, just like a cotangent, except um, the intervals will be slightly different, but it's going to look more like a cotangent graph. So at the first interval to the left of my new origin, I'm gonna be at the amplitude, okay? Um, and remember, I went up one, so with an amplitude of two, now I'm actually at the point negative three pi over four, three, because I had to go up two units from my new x-axis. So likewise now, one unit to the right is gonna be down at negative one, because I'm at a positive, x equals positive, I'm sorry, y equals positive one is my new x-axis, so two units below that is at uh, negative pi over four, negative one. And then just like before, they go through those amplitudes and approach my vertical asymptotes. So, Using the information we've done over the past couple days in section 5.3, we should be able to use the information from today and give those examples in the PowerPoint a good run. I also have the base graphs included in the PowerPoint so you don't have to look at them from here to try to copy them down. And we'll talk about it in class tomorrow.